best gaming PC isn't the one you buy, it's the one that you build. Building PCs can be a very expensive hobby but that doesn't mean you can't get a great powerful build for a reasonable price. Not everyone needs to play game at 4K after all. The trick is to build a PC that will offer impressive performance now while still delivering the power needed to play games at least 2 or 3 years in the future. And that's exactly why today I'm going to show you a very best high-end gaming slash editing PC possible for $1500 which is roughly equal to 95,000 Indian rupees. Now before we get started, I would like to mention that this is the first part in two part series of PC build. In the second part, I'll be building a $2000 high end gaming slash editing PC which I'll be releasing tomorrow, so stay tuned. And all the parts and the components that I'm going to show you in this build is purchased from offline market because the PC components on online market is quite expensive as compared to offline and I'll be showing the price difference in the later part of the video. So now with that being said, let's start. Now let's check out the components and parts that I'll be using for this $2000 PC build. For cabinet, I'm using the Masterbox 5 cabinet from Cooler Master. For power supply, I chose the Corsair RM650X which is gold certified. For graphics, I went for 6GB GeForce GTX 1060 Founders Edition. In terms of motherboard, I decided to go with Asus Prime X370 Pro motherboard. As for the processor, I chose the Ryzen 7 1700X coupled with 16 gigs of HyperX Fury RAM. Now for cooling, I selected the Hyper 2 to dual fan cooler from Cooler Master and at last for storage I went with Samsung 850 Evo 250GB SSD as my primary storage and 2TB Western Digital hard drive for storing the data. Now starting with the processor, for this $1500 PC build I'm using the Ryzen 7 1700X which is AMD's new flagship processor. An 8 core 16 thread beast with a mere 95 watt TDP and a sticker price that's less than half that of comparable Intel processors. The Ryzen 1700X rocks stock clock speed of 3.6 GHz ramping up to 3.8 when more power is needed. You also still get the full 20 MB complement of aggregated level 3 and level 2 cache and the 20 lane of PCIe 3.0 throughput. Now I purchased the 1700X in offline market for 27,500 Indian rupees, whereas in Amazon India it is priced at 30,500. For the motherboard, I used the ASUS Prime X370 Pro motherboard and it offers everything you would expect in ASUS motherboard. There are 4 DDR4 memory slots that can handle up to 64 GB and add speed all the way up to 3200 MHz. There is Turbo M.2 connectivity with transfer speed up to 32 GB per second. 6 ADA port offer even more storage option. There is also a 3.1 front panel connector along with 3 3.1 rear ports. ASUS has also included all the features enthusiasts have come to expect in ASUS motherboard. 5-way optimization by Dual Intelligent Processor 5 provides whole system optimization with a single click. ASUS also added their own Aura Sync RGB lighting system with lighting control, RGB strap header and lighting effect synchronization with compatible ASUS product. Now, this motherboard cost me 11,200 Indian rupees in offline market but in Amazon it is priced between 14 to 15,000. As for the most affordable model in NVIDIA's range of Pascal graphics processor, the GeForce GTX 1060 is the most exciting release for cost-conscious PC gamers. For this build, I am using the Founders Edition of GeForce GTX 1060 which generally costs significantly more than third-party versions and a huge shoutout to NVIDIA for sending me this. The card comes with all the performance, power consumption and feature benefits of NVIDIA's Pascal architecture at a more modest performance level. However, the GTX 1060 is fast enough to run the latest game with decent quality setting at up to 2560 by 1414 pixels. With consistently good performance at resolution up to 2560 by 1440 pixels, the GTX 1060 is a great card for the majority of gamers who don't have a 4K display or multi-monitor setups. You will be able to run at all those resolution with higher ultra quality settings enabled to while averaging 60 fps or higher. For decent 4K gaming, you are going to have to spend significantly more and buy a GTX 1070 or even GTX 1080. The GTX 1060 Founders Edition is not available in India as of now. The one that I'm using is sent by Nvidia so I cannot comment on the pricing. As for the RAM, I use the 116GB stick of Kingston HyperX Fury 2400MHz DDR4 RAM. The best thing that I liked about this RAM is that it automatically recognizes its host platform and overclock to the highest frequency possible, meaning you don't need to tweak it by yourself. 
Fury DDR4 runs at 1.2 volts even at 2666 megahertz so it stay cooler while you play. You don't need to alter the voltage to reach higher speeds which means there is more power for the other hardware in the system. Fury's sleek asymmetrical black heat spreader provides enhanced thermal dissipation to help keep you cool and help you stand out from the crowd. Now, this one cost me 10,000 Indian rupees in offline, but in Amazon it is available for 12,500 Indian rupees. In terms of storage, I use the Samsung 850 EVO 250GB SSD as my primary storage and a 2TB Western Digital hard drive for storing the data. The 850 EVO is the second SSD from Samsung that uses a 3D vertical flash memory cell, meaning you will get insane read and write speeds which is ideal if you are into gaming or content creating. The 250GB Samsung 850 EVO cost me 5500 Indian rupees and the 2TB WD Blue hard drive cost me 4500 Indian rupees in offline market, whereas on Amazon, Samsung 850 EVO and 250TB WD Blue hard drive is priced at 7000 and 5750 Indian rupees respectively. You don't need to buy a fancy or an overpriced power supply in a build like this. Get one from a reputable manufacturer with 80 plus gold certification and you're good to go. And that's exactly what I did. I chose the Corsair RM650X which nicely fits the budget and the two best thing about this power supply is that it's modular and it's 80% gold certified that means it's 90% efficient at 50% load. It's also very silent because of its relaxed fan profile and semi-passive mode feature which only enables the fan when the unit's internal temperature reaches a rather high threshold. The RM650X is also a perfect choice for a strong gaming system because it can support two high-end VGAs with a power consumption of around 250W each. And that's the reason why I opted for this. The Corsair RM650X power supply cost me 7500 Indian rupees in offline, whereas in Amazon it is priced at 12400. Now as for the CPU cooler, I chose the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Turbo which is our go-to for folks who want a solid CPU cooler without breaking the bank. And this one is the dual fan version which provides better cooling than the previous model. It supports sockets from Intel as well as from AMD and it is fully compatible with latest AM4 sockets. For a budget cooler, it's certainly presentable and the quality of the fan on the front and back certainly adds a lot with its LED lighting and transparent black blades. The cooling tire is quite slim which should greatly improve compatibility with taller RAM modules. In offline market, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Turbo cost me 2800 Indian rupees whereas in Amazon it's available for 3400 Indian rupees. For the cabinet, we are using Masterbox 5T from Cooler Master. The Masterbox 5T is a mid-tower style case featuring a unique design, from the two-tone color scheme to carry handle on the top. This case appeals the first-time builder as well as the veteran who need the flexibility that the Masterbox 5T offers. The overall design is fairly simple and I like that. It can work as a gaming case, a workstation case or just a journal use case. The front acrylic panel is flanked on the either side by vertical intake vents trimmed in the red metal mesh. The acrylic front has a mirror finish and while it has a dark smoke translucence, there is no doubt that any LED fan you use up front would really look nice. Right away the motherboard tray and the PC component are visible through the large clear case window. Now, I am a big fan of red and black themed components, so when I first pulled the case out of the packaging, I was hooked. The front panel consists of a standard items like the hard drive activity LED, reset button, two USB 3.0 ports, headphone and mic jacks. The main power button is in the center. Off the right is a little extra something, a two-speed fan control switch for case fans through which you can control the speed of installed fans. Now, this one cost me around 7000 Indian rupees in offline but in Amazon it is available anywhere between 11 to 13000. So all in all if you compare the online and offline pricing then you can clearly say that there is a huge difference and you can save a lot if you purchase PC components offline. Now if you talk about the performance then I think the overall performance of this build is really great and a perfect bang for your buck as I am testing this since almost 10 days. And it doesn't matter for what purpose you are going to use this PC either for gaming or for video editing this can handle anything very easily. The Ryzen 1700X is a very good multitasking processor which outperforms every Intel processor at its price range in every rendering and video encoding application. However, in gaming also it performed really well, but if you spend a little bit more and buy a GTX 1070 or 1080 then I think there would be a significant improve in the frame rates. But if you are one of those who would use a 1080p monitor then you don't have to worry about the frame rates as in my testing I was easily hitting more than 60 frames in my 1080p monitor at max setting and the game experience was really good. 
Now if you want to see how GTX 1060 performs in 4K monitor then in my next build I am using a 4K monitor from LG and that video is set to release tomorrow so stay tuned. Overall this is a great looking PC that has 8 core and 16 thread and good overall gaming performance for around $1500. But if you are building something similar and you are quite concerned about gaming performance then you should probably opt for different GPU like maybe GTX 1070 or 1080. But if you are a video editor and want to use this as your editing workstation then GTX 1060 is enough. So guys what do you think about this $1500 PC build? Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And tomorrow I'll be releasing the second part of this video in which I am going to build a $2000 PC. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet then just hit the red subscribe button and do hit the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. So this is Samir signing off and I'll see you guys in my next one.